talk about humor, people, it's important to be able to laugh sometimes even at ourselves. And most of us can do that, especially since laughter is contagious. And for comedians, it's on a whole different level because we're wired to see the humor in everything we encounter, whether we want to or not. And it's constant. The best you can do is hope you possess the discipline to keep it at bay when the situation warrants. You can't shut it off. A child falls into a gorilla pit because we're doing a bang up job on the parenting front. Most people see a tragedy. Oh my God, this is terrible. Comedians, on the other hand, see a tragedy and potentially a new joke to add to the set. This is terrible, but I can get two minutes out of this three if I personify the gorilla. It's just how our brains work, which is fortunate because the world will be a dark, cold place if we couldn't laugh at how awful it can be. Having said that, why is it becoming more and more necessary for comedians to have to tell people Usually we expect comedians to make light of things to which we can relate. And more often than not, it's fine. Until the joke starts circulating around the room and they make their way to your table. Yeah, no problem with me making fun of race and gender. What? These are just jokes. He's joking. Come on, we're having a little fun here. Lighten up. I mean, it's not like anybody's getting hurt here. It's just jokes. And you know what? In all fairness, black people are not the most punctual people. I mean, he's got a point. Women do be shopping though. Y'all, y'all be shopping. Well, Martha, I mean, a lot of white people can't dance. I mean, I can't dance. You most certainly can't dance. And Elaine, remember that company party? What? And blue blazes? And it's all fun and games. But if I tell a fat joke, ah, oh, there it is. Fat shaming. He's fat shaming. He hates fat people. I just felt like for me, it was more like he was attacking the audience with his personal views on obesity. I mean, I felt attacked. I felt attacked. It's no laughing matter. Obesity is a disease. Yeah, and a lot of times it's caused by sandwiches and cookies and shit. And because I see the humor in that, I'm gonna joke about it. Like I did with all the other subjects with which you had no problem. Look people, these are jokes. There's no hatred involved. I don't hate anybody, except Steve, I hate Steve. Not that Steve, he's cool. I mean the other Steve, I hate that Steve. And I especially don't hate fat people. Some of my best friends are fat. And here's something about me you didn't know. I identify as overweight. That's right, you can do that now. The proper term is trans fat. Even in social situations, I sometimes, not often, but sometimes, find myself having to remind people not to take me seriously when I'm doing a bit. And you could argue that, when not on stage or in a comedic setting, one might be more likely to assume that my intentions aren't founded in humor. Fair enough, but there's two things about that. As I mentioned earlier, the comedy brain is always yammering in the background. And when I'm joking around, I'm really joking around, like it's ridiculous. It takes a special person to take what I'm saying seriously. And I don't mean like, you know, there's just something about that guy special. I mean, what is he doing outside without a helmet and a chaperone special? For example, I was in a bar once, and I'm hanging out with some buddies of mine. I'm eating bar food nonsense, I'm drinking whiskey, you know, as you do. And I made a joke about eating and drinking in this way in an effort to shorten a lifespan because I don't wanna be here when the zombies come. <laughs> That's stupid. And my buddies know I'm joking. I mean, not about the zombie part. I, I don't want to be here for that. It just seems like a lot of running and camping. I'm just not an outdoor guy. Outside is the worst side. I don't want to camp. I, I don't want to be part of that. But they knew I was joking, as did the bartender, so we all had a laugh. I went on further to explain how if the human race was going to be wiped out by an apocalyptic event, I personally prefer the robot apocalypse, namely because it would be prefaced by a brief utopian era. The machines would be doing all the work. They'd use math to fix all of our world problems. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, sex bots. That's right, ladies. You better get your shit together before the sex bots become commonplace. I mean, at the end of the day, we're human. We're going to screw that up eventually. But for like 10, 15 years, oh, the sweet life. Anyway, we're all having a laugh about that. And everybody's having a good time. Now, my buddies are all sitting on this side and I'm kind of turned on my stool facing them. This guy on my other side chimes in with, so that's it, the robots are gonna be the ones taking all our good jobs. Which, I gotta say, great contribution to the bit as far as I was concerned. It was ridiculous, topical, and succinct. So I volley it back with, yeah dude, no more nine to five for us. Then he goes, so the robots take all of our jobs and send the economy into a downward spiral. Now I'm thinking to myself, Man, this guy's a pro. He is really committing to his end of this bit. So, in the spirit of yes anding, I return with, well, at that point, we really wouldn't be relying on an economy as we know it. I mean, now let's be real about this, right? We're not exactly in good shape as it is. And it's not like there's anything real behind our currency anyway. Good news is, machines don't need the money, so we just get all the stuff they manufacture for free. And, and they deliver it to you. There goes the crime rate, theft, why? You just point and click and bam, new TV. I mean, let them have the jobs. You think Sheila wants to work at the DMV? Then he pauses, like he's pondering what I just said and getting angry. And that's when it hit me. This isn't some clever gentleman contributing to a humorous exchange. This is some moron who now hates his smartphone because I've convinced him that eventually it's gonna replace him at the plant. This is someone who is now genuinely upset 
and ranting and raving about robots coming to this country and taking all of our jobs. I mean, how does a story as ridiculous as that turn into a debate about the workforce? Are you looking for a reason to be upset? Because there's plenty of real reasons to be upset. Listen, people, I'm not saying that there aren't people out there who mean to do you harm with the things that they say. Those people are out there and they suck. But most of those people aren't comedians. So you have a choice because life is amazing. It's also a shit show wall to wall. You can choose to take jokes as simply that and laugh at some of what ails us all. Or you can choose to take them seriously as some sort of attack against you and your personal beliefs and your dog who for some reason is wearing a sweater. Why is your dog wearing a sweater? Just know that whatever it is you choose, comedians have chosen to make you laugh. That's it. These are just jokes. Now, having said all that, it has come to my attention that I made some rather harsh comedic remarks earlier today that may have been more hurtful than humorous, and for that, I offer an apology. I realize now, albeit unfortunately too late, that I failed to take into consideration that the offensive odor in my Uber driver's vehicle, which was caused by an extremely excessive amount of cologne, may have in fact been the lingering evidence of the passenger he carried before me, who was reportedly of Latin American descent. To that end, I want to apologize to Nikolai for any and all invective remarks I made during our trip. Javier, not so much. I mean, seriously, you know you're not supposed to wear all of the cologne, right? I mean, all of it? I will now open the floor for questions. Yes, in light of this incident, do you still intend to get on your soapbox on a weekly basis? Absolutely, and I invite Nikolai, Javier, and anyone else inclined to click the like button for this video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on social media for comedy and other forms. And I will continue to return for Soapbox Sunday every week, as promised. Next question. Yeah, Mr. Logan, how do you explain Next question from anyone but Black Suit Brown Shoes Guy. But Mr. Logan... Next!